Have you read any Jane Austen who she's often compared to? No, I haven't actually. I need to. It's kind of embarrassing to admit that, I think, but yeah. <laughs> and you, you're in charge of molding young minds? I mean, towards science, not towards like, you know, <laughs> expressing their feelings, that kind of rubbish. <laughs> well, I personally think that if this is science, that your life will be 25% improved if you read Jane Austen's all of her works immediately. Yeah, I feel there we're just kind of making up statistics so off the top of our head and not really kind of basing them any fact. So, I mean, yeah, it probably will be better if everyone reads Jane Austen, but yeah. I must say the science is a bit shaky. I will admit that. <laughs> it's have every one person, your, yourself, and that's it. Science to follow. Well, I'm kind of conducting my own experiment in terms of Georgia Hare's work and trying to get people to come around to the idea that she's almost as good as Jane Austen. What were your preconceptions about the book? I was expecting a kind of sweeping romance kind of book where the man is a, very much a gentleman the entire way through and the woman is kind of like a bit fawny and, you know, kind of standard. What kind of was written in literature at that time about kind of how women behave. And I guess I was kind of treated that to some extent with some of the characters, but then the main characters were very different from that. I mean, have you seen Jane Austen film adaptations? No, I mean, like we had... Pride and Prejudice is on video, I think, when I was younger, but I always kind of like avoided it because, I mean, I would have rather watched just people with guns and that kind of thing. So, <laughs> no, I haven't really seen the adaptations. So we can fairly say that this is very much the opposite of what you'd normally pick up to read. This isn't looking good for my conversion scorecard. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Okay. So I just want to interject here to describe Hallad a bit. He's about the same age as the hero in our book, the Marquis of Vidal. This is going to embarrass him, but he's quite swoony too. A bit of a modern version of a classic hair hero. The Marquis, however, is one of his wildest characters. So I thought it would be amusing to see if there were any other parallels between Hallard and his literary equivalent. I mean, I regularly, I wouldn't say many, but I mean, the one thing we did have in common was, I mean, he likes to duel and kill people. On the regs, I guess. He's very fond of killing people. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I've been known to get a gun out and shoot someone in a bar I've been at, so, you know. Right, at the least provocation. I've noticed that about you. Yeah, I'm very, yeah. very hot-tempered. My, my father was exactly the same as well, you know, they shot a lot of people too. Right, 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 true, true. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why they call you Hallard Hot Fists Ham. Is that where that name comes from? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hot-fisted, and I also drive really fast. I'm Hot Wheels, too. First difference between Videl the hero and Hallard? Hallard rides a bike, not a carriage or a horse. Do you ever have any races on your bike? Amongst your friends, do you place bets on, on who can get to, say, Stoke Newington quicker? Not really amongst my friends. I'll see strangers on my bike, and I'll give them a knowing look, and then they'll know it's time to, you know, get ready to race. <laughs> And it's, you know, it's the illegal street racing scene of London with the, with the push bikes. Right. They're pretty dangerous, you know, pretty dangerous guys. Never on the edge. Yeah, 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 yeah. Something tells me Hallard is using a tiny bit of creative license. 